Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you are not doing well, I am happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. So this video is an energy update. It's about the full moon that is coming up in July, July 23rd, 2021 at 10 36 p.m to be exact this full moon is going to be in the sign of aquarius and this video is five things that you need to know about this full moon so you'll see me look down from time to time because i have the computer in front of me with the chart up for the day and also i have my notes when it comes to the five things that we need to know so basically the first thing that we need to know is that as humans we are religious by nature and when i say we're religious by nature is like take a look around you and how easy it is for us to walk away from religious structures like church and different things like that and then when we enter into spirituality we tend to make things like those religious also and what comes to mind when I'm thinking about that is Saturn sitting in Aquarius and how Aquarius energy, you know, the full moon is in Aquarius and Saturn is also in the sign of Aquarius right now and will be there for for a little while. Normally, you know, Saturn stays in the sign for about two and a half years or so. But like Aquarius is ruled by Saturn and Uranus. The way how I like to describe it is like, Saturn is Aquarius's birth father in the sense like Aquarius um, is connected to Saturn through DNA. It's almost like say Aquarius's mom basically had a uh, sperm, basically a sperm, I can't think of the word right now, but basically Saturn is just the sperm that, you know, fathered Aquarius. So basically it is in Aquarius to have Saturnian ways but uranus is who raised aquarius and with uranus raising aquarius um aquarius is more like the father uranus who raised who raised um who raised him i'm gonna say him just for the sake of it but really still has saturn's strong dna within it with saturn being in aquarius saturn is at home because saturn was aquarius's original ruler and with the moon, you know, a few days after the full moon, the moon will conjunct Saturn in Uranus. And what comes to mind when I think about the conjunction of the moon to Saturn is basically us within ourselves, like becoming, you know, us talking to ourselves in ways where we feel the need for more structure. We feel the need for things to be in order. We feel because Saturn is all about rules and order and discipline. And it's like with the moon being so close to Saturn and Aquarius, it's like this is us talking about the need for more rules and discipline and order in order to feel safe, in order to keep things going. And in the sign of Aquarius, you know, this is all happening in the 11th house, in the part of the sky that talks about the groups that we associate ourselves with. So this is us, you know, being with the groups that we associate ourselves with and justifying why it's necessary to be in these groups so that we can continue some kind of order or stability or security. Like what comes to mind is the isolation that's happening in the world when it comes to those who choose to get the job and those who choose to not get the job. 
it's almost like, you know, it's not almost like the reality is people are being isolated and shamed for that. And to me with Saturn being in Aquarius, that's what that reflects to me. And with the moon, the full moon being in Aquarius, it's like it'll shine light to what's happening with that situation. You know, it'll shine light to it. But when I look at the overall like chart of the month, it's kind of spooky to me in a way. It's spooky to me because the moon is sitting between Saturn and Pluto. You know, Pluto talks about control, which is in uh, uh, Capricorn. And Pluto talks about control and the need to, you know, have death and rebirth in something to keep order going. But the kind of control where it's like, you know, basically think of like basically a flood coming in and just destroying everything in sight. And then after the flood or even a fire, new life comes after because everything is leveled out and newness will come. And the flood or the fire is a kind of control that you can't resist. It's coming whether you want it or not. So with the moon sitting between Saturn and Pluto, to me that talks in this part of the sky that talks about the groups that we associate ourselves with, you know, the groups that we connect with because of the need to like be understood, to feel connection. It's like light will be shine, light will shine on basically what's happening in these groups and our need for these groups. So the first thing that we need to know about this full moon is that as humans, we are religious by nature. Out of fear, we ask to be controlled. Out of fear, we need to make everything into some kind of system because within our human form, in order for us to identify with this realm, things need to be tangible. We need facts and a fact is a collective agreement. So we all need to collectively come together and you know get validated by each other. That's like we all collectively coming together and say those people are wrong for the decision that they're making when it comes to their own health, their own bodies, because their decision is negatively affecting us. So we need more structure, we need more control, we need more order. So yeah, the first thing that we need to know is that as people, we are religious by nature and our need for religion, our need for that kind of structure, routine and control comes from a place of fear. It does not come from a place of love. The second thing that we need to know from this full moon in Aquarius is that chaos often brings universal order. Yeah, chaos will bring universal order. But back to the first thing that I said, out of fear, when chaos brings universal order, we allow others to take control and basically take control in order to free us, but then turn us into prisoners in the process of taking control. And everything that I'm mentioning about outwardly, like what's happening, say, in the world, like back to the first one where, you know, we are religious by nature, that's something that we can see in the world, but then we can also see it within ourselves if we're honest. In the sense, like, as humans, we need to constantly be validated when it comes to our experiences because we were conditioned to think that, you know, whatever we're experiencing inside of ourselves, if no one else can relate, then it didn't happen you know so that's what makes us religious by nature also our need you know to to resonate our need to 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 be validated in this realm and then the next thing is that you know chaos brings universal order and chaos can bring universal order within our own lives that's when sometimes unexpected tragic events happen and those un unexpected tragic events sets us on the right path and helps us to have experience we never thought we would have or you know just achieve things or just basically overall have the kind of human experiences that worked out for our greatest good but we couldn't see in the process and the moon conjuncting Saturn and then squaring Uranus to me is what I'm referring to when I say chaos can create universal order because here Saturn is in Aquarius you know with the moon conjuncting Saturn because like a few hours or a day after the the full moon the moon will conjunct Saturn so you know that's our inner world and us saying like yes okay maybe it's best if you know, we allow this to happen or that to happen because we'll feel safer. This is where we we question ourselves when it comes to the groups 
and the groups we associate ourselves with and think, okay, maybe it would be best you know, for us to go along with the systems and the structures. But with Uranus in Uranus in Taurus squaring Saturn, which will conjunct the moon a few days after the full moon, basically that square to me is the chaos that will bring universal order and the kind of chaos that that square brings. And keep in mind, Saturn and Pluto is in retrograde. So a lot of reflecting is happening when it comes to the energies that I mentioned. But in the process of reflecting with Saturn, you know, thinking about how to bring more structure when it comes to the groups we're associating ourselves with, how to apply more control, the square that's happening between Uranus and Taurus, that square can create like chaos, chaos when it comes to our financial system, chaos when it comes to the internet, you know, like there's a lot of wars happening when it comes to like basically people like hijacking into systems and, you know, like basically taking over and affecting our reality through digital, digitally, because everything is ran digitally. So basically chaos and, you know, unexpected events will happen when it comes to our financial structure, our earth, our earth itself, the way we feed ourselves, the way we take care of ourselves. But we don't need to fear because again, chaos can bring universal order. You know, chaos, sometimes it is the chaos that shakes up the structure. It's the chaos that breaks the shackles and free us. So this is where it's important for us to always trust the process and don't allow fear to cause us to run and give our freedom away for someone to protect us. But in the process of protect us, protecting us, they have to imprisonate us. So yes, with that square um, happening between Saturn and Uranus and the moon conjuncting Saturn, it's like our inner world and conversation will be on Saturn's side. We will be saying, and it, and when I say Saturn's side, meaning we will be saying maybe it's best for us to have things the way it is. It's like a person being prisoned for so long and when they're finally set free, they don't know what to do. The gates are open and they don't wanna leave because they are so comfortable being a prisoner where the thought of being free is actually scary because like being a prisoner felt safer because they didn't have to think about much. You know, where Uranus in Taurus is shaking things up. And from the shakeup, it's like we will be called to take responsibility, to be accountable, but it's important for us to not trust. It, but it is important for us to trust. It is important for us to not be fearful. But like when I say not trust, like I thought, okay, I'll edit that out. But no, it is important for us to not trust what's happening outside of ourselves and trust what is happening inside of ourselves, what we are feeling and reflect on past experiences to help us to understand what's happening in the present moment. So trust the chaos and know that chaos is a part of universal order. When we look in nature, we see nothing but chaos. A tree will fall down by lightning. And then in the process of the breaking down and decomposing of that tree, it will neutralize, it, it will fertilize the soil probably neutralize it in the process, but it will fertilize the soil and aid the growing process of other things that's coming behind it. So trust the process. And yeah, that's the second thing that we know, need to know, that universal order comes from chaos. The third thing that we need to know when it comes to this full moon is that it is important for us to be still. The reason why it is important for us to be still is because so the sun always opposes the moon at the time of a full moon. They oppose each other at the exact degree. But the reason why it's important for us to be still is because the sun is in the sign of, of Leo and our Mercury, our mind, how we communicate is a sign over in Cancer. And the sun is the king and Mercury is the king's messenger. So because of that, who we identify as and the way we communicate, basically there's some distance between it. You know how dangerous it could be when the messenger isn't 
is far away from the king. It's dangerous because the king gets the information too late and sometimes the information gets where it's going too late. So this can create challenges where basically what we are hearing, we are not hearing things completely clearly because the process that happens between the time something enters our ear until we identify with it you know, opposed to us thinking something. And those who have their Mercury in a separate sign from their sun can relate to experiencing challenges when it comes to communicating in the sense that what you think to say isn't always what you say because the process of basically fixing up what you're saying so it comes out properly. Sometimes too much filtering happens. So a lot is lost in translation when you are communicating. So with that being said, the Mercury and the Sun is a being opposed by, you know, so all this is happening in the fifth house, the Sun and Mercury in the house of our pleasures and you know how we express ourselves creatively and enjoy ourselves and that's being um opposed by you know the groups that we associate ourselves with and how we give back into the world and in that house is pluto the moon and saturn so if pluto the moon and saturn opposing um the sun and mercury to me, what is why it's important to be still is because the moon is opposing Mercury. How what we are hearing and what we are feeling is there's a conflict between what we're hearing and what we're feeling. What we're hearing and what we're feeling is in, there's an opposition. So basically, this is where challenges will come in where we might be hearing, getting guidance or a message that is for our greatest good when it comes to our home and our family, our security and our stability with Mercury and Cancer. Like that's the information that we're consuming. That's what we're gravitating towards. So we get guidance when it comes to our home and our family and our community. But with the moon opposing that, you know, between Saturn and Pluto, we might hear something, but then we will feel a way that basically contradicts what we're hearing. To this, to this, in the sense that basically, you know, cancer, like we're hearing things that and focusing on things that will provide stability and security for ourselves, you know, where we can secure ourselves away from the world, protect our families, the ones we love and things like that, where the moon will have us in a place where it's like, okay, maybe it is best for, you know, for us to get more, um, have more um, allow the government or the system to have more control over the way things are going. Maybe it's best that some people need to be told what to do because if not, they won't do it. It's like it goes from um, a place where it's like we are checking in with ourselves to where we are listening in and checking in with what the world has to say. So this is why it's best to be still. It's best to be still. When, my favorite thing to say to myself is that when you don't know what to do, do nothing. And that's why around the time of the full moon, it's best to be still and just do nothing and just pay attention to the push and the pull that you will feel within yourself when it comes to the information that you're hearing around you and then what you're feeling within yourself. But make sure what you're feeling within yourself, if it's con contradicting the information that you're hearing around you, basically make sure that fear is not a driving factor in any of this. You never want to make a decision out of fear. You never want to support anything out of fear because when you're supporting something out of fear, you know you're being controlled. So the, the fourth thing that we need to know about this full moon is basically um, only you can free yourself. And that comes from the fact that the, the full moon is on July 23rd, 2021. The day adds up and reduces to the number eight. So the day itself has eight energy. Eight energy ties back into Saturnian energy. The number eight is the energy that talks about control, systems, orders. This is our authority figures. This is our police officers, our teachers. This is the energy that basically 
passes along system structures and orders because it believes it is the thing to do. Why? Because it is familiar. It is something that has been done consistently before. You know, the, the example that I like to give with say the number eight Capricorn and Taurus energy is these are the people that pass the baton along and not checking like why they're passing it. You know, have, have what does what you're passing along work for you on a personal level? Have you tried it yourself and understanding or are you just passing it along for the sake of passing it along? So, and then the next thing too with the number eight energy is the need for system control and, and concrete thinking us saying, you know, this is what my ancestors did, so I'm going to do it. And then the next thing is the tunnel vision that comes with the number eight energy, us only seeing what's in front of us. And that focus can be so detrimental because it's like we could miss, you know, miss important things that's happening around us. But because our focus is on something else or whatever our focus is on, we can't see what's happening even though the plus side is that same focus can create success because it helps us to be dedicated. So that's also something to look forward to on that day, the dedication that that focus will bring. But the challenge when it comes to that focus is that the full moon talks about cul culmination, things coming to an end or evolving to the next level. So at that level of focus, to me, it's like, are we really evolving to the next level? Because here we go again, passing on old traditions and things saying, this is the way it's supposed to be. Why is it the way it's supposed to be? Is it supposed to be this way based on our personal experiences and the fact that we've applied these methods and see that they actually work? Or are we passing things along because it is just the way how it's supposed to be? And I can't help how the day is the 23rd. You know, the whole day adds up and reduces to the number eight, but the day itself, the 23rd, talks about us, you know, the emotional nurturing side of ourselves as individuals and our need to be creative, but more than more than anything, our need to be free. So within ourselves on the day we'll feel a a we'll feel conflicted. You know, the confliction, the confliction us feeling conflicted again comes from say, you know, Saturn and Uranus basically having their square, you know, and the square is a matter of like, it's like mixing oil and water. Saturn wants to control and Uranus wants to be free. The number five is like Uranus energy and the number eight is Saturn energy. So basically that's that conflict of a part of us wanting and needing to be free. And then a part of us wanting to follow structure and order. Why? Because it's the way it's supposed to be. Says who? So the fifth thing to know about the full moon is no one can lie to you if you are not already lying to yourself. And what where that comes from is the fact that Pluto is chining Pluto is chining Neptune and Neptune is sextiling the sun and Mercury. So what when I was thinking about the trine between Pluto and Neptune, I was trying to get an image of like how I, what that trine would look like if I was to see it in my everyday life. And to me, a trine between Pluto and Neptune, a perfect example that my spirit guide showed me was a woman giving birth and getting, say, um, some kind of a, a shot of, of the plus, uh, whatever the injection is that helps the helps her to feel nothing and be able to push the baby out easily. Pushing the baby out is the Plutarian energy and her going into this um, different realm from what's actually happening within her body and around her is that Neptunian energy. You know, it doesn't have to be drugs and escapism. It could be through meditation, through singing and through dancing, we're able to do something challenging. But what keeps coming to mind is like, yeah, someone, you know, us using escapism to a certain extent to bring forward change that is coming, change that is necessary, change that we can't control. But um, yeah, like I said, meditation and music and nature and things like that can also be a thing that helps us to fall into that state. And then the sextile between Neptune and the sun and Mercury. 
to me, that sextile talks about like how we will see ourselves and communicate in a way that basically it's like fantasy. It's like a situation when the way how we see ourselves and communicate isn't always realistic to what's happening, but that's okay, I guess, if it makes us feel good, you know? So with that happening in the sky, to me, those two placements, those two, the, those as that aspect that's happening can be a beautiful one in the sense that basically we can go inside of ourselves in our subconscious mind and from it we can manifest into the world because we can see ourselves as who we actually are and it sucks that you know we have to daydream and fantasize about our real self in that neptunian way because we've been conditioned to see ourselves in this you know um religious rigid structured practical way you know, to where it's like we have to go inside of ourselves and tap into that 12th house Piscean Neptune dreamy energy to perceive who we really are, which is spirit energy. Um, so that's what's beautiful about that. And if we don't allow fear to control us, we can dwell in that energy and manifest beautiful things into this world and make changes in the world based on the positive vibration that we're manifesting because we know the truth about who we are, the fact that we are energy. And because we are energy, we can do anything and everything because everything and anything around us is made up of energy itself but it is our disconnection with that energy that causes us to be controlled and manipulated because we are told not to trust our feelings not to trust our emotions and we're told not to trust what's happening inside of us so with every so with the way we were taught to disconnect from ourselves that disconnects us from our power but with that sextile between the sun mercury and neptune along with the trine between Pluto, I feel like it can help us to let go of challenging things by us, you know, basically going into a state of bliss and fantasizing about the possibility. So it's almost like, you know, a relationship isn't working. And instead of fighting to hold on to it, you start getting excited. Or let's use a job, for example. A job is falling apart. You might lose your job. And instead of holding on and being fearful, you start to fantasize about what it'll be like to actually do what you love. So this full moon brings this thing to an end. And instead of you, this ending coming with you holding on, kicking and screaming, Instead, you are manifesting the new beginnings that comes with all endings because, you know, like a circle, there is no beginning and there is no ending. So when we think something comes to an ending, it, it just evolves into something else. You know, it, it, it either evolves up into something else or evolves down into something else. But there isn't ever fully an ending. You know, life keeps going no matter what. So it is up to us to create the kind of life and experience that we want to have inside of ourselves before we act on it. You know, but we have to trust ourselves and just know that any decision that is made out of fear is 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 through is you are being controlled any decision that you make out of fear know that you are being controlled so yeah the fifth thing no one can lie to you unless you are lying for lying to yourself so on the negative side of what i just mentioned about that trine and the sextile between neptune and the sun and and Mercury or between Pluto, that beautiful aspect that's happening, like we can utilize that to our greatest good and basically allow an ending and a new beginning to merge together. It's like the woman ending carrying the baby and merging the baby coming out into the world, giving birth and the Neptune energy making the birth easy. But an end and a rebirth happen. You know, it's like when the baby takes its first breath it's like, you know, basically it shows the difference between death and life in that moment. So, you know, that's the positive aspect of it. And the negative aspect of it is information being controlled and us allowing propaganda and things outside of ourselves to control our inner world and manipulate us to manifest in ways that go against us. Because basically the powers outside of us are not as 
powerful as we think they are. They need, they need our permission. And when I say they, whoever is in control of our media, the information that we get and everything that's happening around us when it comes to trying to control our lives, our permission is needed. Nothing can be done without our permission, but we don't realize that fear allows us to manifest against our own will because whatever you're feeling inside of you is what you're projecting out into the world and that is what you are attracting, what you are creating. So yes, this full moon in Aquarius this month is going to be an eventful one, an interesting one, and an exciting one. What comes to mind, though, before I go is I think about how we think things like slavery um, came to an end when, in fact, it just evolved into something else, you know, or say when the cigarette industry realized that too many people were dying and they couldn't fool people anymore with doctors saying, yeah, cigarettes are good for you because they're smoking too. It's like that physical evidence became too much. So they merged into pharmaceuticals. It's like, it's important for us to know that again, nothing never dies or comes to a complete ending. And it is from our fear where we are controlled and we allow these things to get to merge into something else and show up and do the same thing that keeps getting done over and over and over again in a different way. You know, whether it is the cigarette industry, you know, create affecting our health negatively or the pharmaceutical industry doing the same thing. It's like that energy merges. But when we wake up and allow love to guide us and not fear, we can see the energy transforming into something else and just know, you know, know what it is, can see it for what it is. It's nothing for us to fear, but it's nice when we can see a thing for what it is and call it what it is, you know? I hope you guys are still here with me. If you are, I would love to hear about it. Please let me know by dropping me a purple heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.